In the previous video on cell cycle, we have studied the various phases of cell cycle and its checkpoints. In this video, we will study about cell cycle regulation at those checkpoints. Knowledge of cell cycle and its regulation is necessary for understanding many mechanisms involved in the development of cancer. At the end of this session, you should be able to describe cell cycle regulation at G1S and G2M checkpoint and the role of two tumor suppressor gene that is retinoblastoma and P53 in the regulation of cell cycle. Let's begin with the cell cycle regulation at G1S checkpoint. Cell continuously monitor their internal and external environment. Until the conditions are suitable, cells do not undergo division and are arrested at G1S checkpoint. This G1 arrest is mediated by retinoblastoma protein, which is also called as cell cycle regulator. This RB protein is a product of retinoblastoma gene, which is located on chromosome 13. It is a tumor suppressor gene and it controls the progression of cell from G1 to S phase. And this protein is regulated by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. So this dephosphorylated or hypophosphorylated form is active because the transcription factor E2F is bound to RB protein and it leads to no transcription and G1 arrest. While this phosphorylated form of retinoblastoma protein is inactive because when the retinoblastoma protein is phosphorylated, there is release of this E2F factor and it leads to transcription of genes required in the S phase and there is movement of cell from G1 to S phase. In the non-proliferating cells, there is synthesis of growth inhibitors like tumor growth factor beta which stimulate CDK inhibitors like P16 and which inactivate the cyclin and CDK complex which are synthesized during G1 phase and because of this inactivation, the RB protein remains either dephosphorylated or hypophosphorylated and E2F factor is bound to the RB protein and which then binds to the DNA and the second function of RB protein is to recruit the chromatin remodeling proteins like uh, histone methyl transferase and histone deacetylase and together it br brings about the transcriptional block and cell is arrested at G1S checkpoint. In the proliferative cells, there is release of growth factors and these growth factors culminate into synthesis of cyclin DCDK46 complex in early G1 and cyclin ECDK2 complex in late G1 which brings about the phosphorylation of RB protein and because of this phosphorylation it becomes inactive. E2F factor is released, it binds to DNA and it brings about the transcription of genes which are required in S phase and it brings about the G1S movement of cell. Virtually all cancer cells show dysregulation of the G1S checkpoint due to mutation in one of the four genes that regulate the phosphorylation of RB protein. So if there is loss of function of CDK inhibitor P16, if there is overproduction of cyclin D, CDK4 or if there is mutation of RB gene, it results into its loss of function and ultimately uh, there is abnormal or unrestrained cell division and normal cell can be transferred into a malignant cell. Now let's see how cell cycle is regulated at G2M checkpoint. Uh, it is regulated by cyclin BCDK1 complex which is also known as cyclin BCDC2 complex and it is also believed to be a rate limiting step in eukaryotes. After its export to nucleus, it undergoes dephosphorylation catalyzed by phosphatase and it becomes active. This activated form causes phosphorylation of several proteins which are involved in bipolar spindle formation and ultimately it results into mitosis. But if there is DNA damage, it results into activation of protein kinases which through the series of reaction ultimately leads to inactivation of phosphatase so that the cyclin BCDC2 complex cannot be activated and it cannot phosphorylate the several proteins which are involved in the mitosis. So ultimately it results into G2M arrest. Now let's see how P53 acts as a G1S and G2M checkpoint regulator. P53 is a tumor suppressor gene and it acts as a central monitor of stress in the cell which can be activated by anoxia, inappropriate oncogen signaling or DNA damage. Activated P53 controls 
the expression and activity of genes involved in cell cycle arrest dna damage repair the cellular senescence and apoptosis and thus it suppresses the neoplastic transformation of cells in normal cells the level of p53 is regulated by mdm2 protein so unphosphorylated p53 is bound to mdm2 protein and uh, this mdm2 protein is a ubiquitin ligase which attaches ubiquitin to p53 and promotes its degradation by proteasomes so in normal cells p53 is very unstable but in conditions of stress when p53 becomes phosphorylated this mdm2 protein is not able to attach to the phosphorylated p53 so there will be no complex formation of p53 mdm2 and there will be no ubiquitin mediated degradation of p53 which ultimately results into increased level of p53 now let's talk about the p53 mediated cell cycle arrest it occurs late in the g1 phase and we know that p53 is a central monitor of stress in the cell so whenever there is anoxia or inappropriate oncogene signaling or dna damage there is increased activity of p53 gene and it results in the transcription of cdk inhibitor p21 this p21 inhibits the activity of cyclin d cdk uh, complexes uh, in the g1 phase and in turn this uh, inactivation of cyclin d cdk complexes cannot phosphorylate the rb protein and it results into g1 arrest likewise this p21 cdk inhibitor also in, uh, inhibit the cyclin d cdk1 complex and it causes g2 arrest the second action of p53 is dna damage repair the dna damage leads to activation of atm kinase which in turn phosphorylates p53 so this mdm2 protein cannot bind to this phosphorylated p53 so it cannot be degraded and there is increased level of p53 so it increases the transcription of p21 cdk inhibitor and it inhibits the cyclin and cyclin dependent kinases which in turn lead to blockage of phosphorylation of retinoblastoma protein and the cell cycle is arrested at g1 phase and this cell cycle arrest gives the cell breathing time to repair dna damage p53 protein also induces the expression of dna damage repair genes and in turn it is involved in the dna repair once the dna is repaired it leads to inactivation of atm kinase which in turn leads to dephosphorylation of p53 now mdm2 protein can form complex with p53 and it causes ubiquitin mediated degradation of p53 and in turn cell cycle continues but if the dna is not repaired p53 cause permanent arrest or senescence of cell by increasing transcription of proteins p16 and p19 p53 can also cause cell death by apoptosis if dna damage is irreparable the third function of p53 is apoptosis that is programmed cell death when dna damage is not repairable this p53 induces the transcription of pro apoptotic genes like bax noxa and puma and it ultimately leads to formation of complex of cytochrome c apaf1 and caspase9 which ultimately causes apoptosis mutation in apoptotic genes leads to malignant transformation of cells thus P53 helps in maintaining genome stability and hence it is rightly called as guardian of genome. What happens when P53 is inactivated by mutations? So if there is DNA damage there will be no P53 or it will be inactivated and there will be no cell cycle arrest so cell cycle progresses with the damaged DNA and it leads to malignant transformation. So let's summarize today's topic cell cycle is regulated at two important checkpoints g1s and g2m checkpoint g1s checkpoint is regulated by retinoblastoma protein and it is also called as cell cycle regulator g2m checkpoint is regulated by cyclin b cdk1 complex p53 also regulates cell cycle at both g1s and g2m checkpoint by arresting cell cycle and by repairing the dna damage and by causing apoptosis it maintains the genomic stability that's why it is rightly called as guardian of genome
the next video will be on apoptosis where we will study the important aspects of apoptosis for understanding the molecular mechanism of carcinogenesis thank you for watching